Hello friends. Thank you for tuning in to Think Reviews podcasts where we share our book reviews with you. Exploring the various adaptations of the world of Sherlock Holmes stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, we came across the book series by author Nancy Springer who writes adventures featuring Sherlock's much younger sister Enola. We have reviewed the first four books on this series here on Thinkerviews platform. The case of the missing Marquis, the case of the left-handed lady, the case of the bizarre bookcase, and the case of the peculiar pink fan. Next in the series of this adventures is the fifth book called The Case of the Cryptic Crinoline. I had a chance to read this book as I pursue this series and here are my thoughts for all the readers on behalf of Team Thinkerviews. The cover page of this book in line with the previous books in this series which have been reprinted with a common theme for all the cover pages fits in with the images that we have gotten used to now. of Enola The whole series has now been illustrated with matching graphics on front pages and this one also features a young tall and thin girl attired in old fashioned clothes in dark colors This book cover has the color scheme of black purple and yellow Enola is holding her faithful dagger while monstrous hands from threatening shadows around her The little circles around the doorway of this story hold a candle, a bird, an elaborate women's dress, a brother and sister facing each other, an embroidery stitch, and a set of ribbons. As usual, all are part of the story, and you will find the references to these symbols as you read through the book. Once again, the dark theme makes it not a standout cover page for casual browsers, but if you are already reading the series, you will recognize it from the other books. The storyline for this book is something like this. This book opens with a brutal war scene in 1855. in a place called Skutari in Turkey young soldiers are perishing from their wounds infection malnutrition as their wives watch helplessly unable to get any help in this hellish place the only beacon of light is a gentle sweet voiced lady who brings some nursing and comfort but even she can't stop thomas tepper's death A few decades later, as Enola comes home in her avatar of Miss Meshel, her old and deaf landlady Mrs. Tupper has something interesting to show her. A ransom note demanding that she deliver her message or else. Completely clueless, Mrs. Tupper requests Enola to help her. Enola puts an advertisement in paper advising the sender that Mrs. Tupper has no message, never had one, and knows nothing of the matter. Instead of resolving the issue, this advertisement seems to start a flurry of panic. Mrs. Tupper is kidnapped by rough-looking goons and her house is overturned. Enola comes home to find wreckage and chaos. In an attempt to put the elderly lady's room to order, she comes across an old-fashioned extravagant dress with an elaborate underlay made of crinoline and decorated with embroidered ribbons. Apart from that, nothing seems to be out of place. Revisiting Mrs. Tupper's story of the time she spent in Turkey with her husband, Enola figures out who the gently caregiver was no other than Florence Nightingale searching for her Enola finds that this lady is not only alive 
but seems to influence all major decisions of the government in spite of never having left her bed since her return from the war. When Enola arrives to her bustling household and sends her a note regarding her current problem, she receives only a negative answer. With no more clues left, how can she retrieve her gentle landlady? The villains keep coming back to retrieve the message they think is somewhere in the house. And Sherlock has by no means given up on finding her. So Enola is running out of disguises and hiding places pretty quickly. Will she find the mysterious message after all these years? And will she be able to protect both herself and her landlady from mistreatment and maybe death if she fails? And now our review of the book. After sorting out the messages delivered through a pink fan in the previous book, Nola is back with yet another adventure in this one. Author Nancy Springer continues the rhyming titles in the Victorian fashion as you can see and brings back the old fashioned crinoline. As the series continues, every book has to have a novelty feature that will keep the reader intrigued so that it does not all become a too familiar tale. In this book, that factor is the Crimea War of 1855 in the legendary Florence Nightingale, who pretty much defined nursing for wartime soldiers for future wars to come. Like every war, this one was also fought on questionable premises. The Crimean War was one of the most confused conflicts ever undertaken by human stupidity. England and Napoleonic France, of all the unlikely allies, joining with heathen Turkey, even more unlikely, against the already dying giant that had been Ottoman Russia. There's not to wonder why, there's but to do or die. Doomed men charging straight into cannon fire for the sake of a godforsaken peninsula in the Black Sea, the Crimea. The descriptions of the war, the callousness of the way life and death were held cheap, and the absolute dependence of wives who followed their soldier husbands to war with all their household belongings is fairly accurate. As a Florence Nightingale describes to Enola how her service was actually seen as intrusion. The doctors and officers saw my presence as interference and as a threat to their party going, picnicking, polo playing, horse racing, high old good times. I had insane notions that the officers should spend their days looking after the welfare of their men, and the doctors should attend to the sick. But as the author says, the ways she has created Florence Nightingale, a leading role model for women of her generation, who chose a life of service and then of recluse rather than following the traditional role model, is somewhat of her imagination. It is true that she had reformative ideas and was a big influence in England as long as she lived. The way her house is portrayed in this book is interesting, although imaginary. Furthering the feminist narrative of the books is Enola's visits to the professional women's club, which allowed women to rest and debate their ideas in the safety in seclusion of a civilized abode. A place like this is just right for a young girl who tends to think logically rather than emotionally and has a right take on established notions. I also found myself contemplating with dark amusement the 18th century philosophers Alexander Pope and his ilk who insisted that everything is for the best 
in this best of all possible worlds. In other words, if the baby dies, one must tell oneself that things would have been much worse had it lived. If thousands of orphans are starving, surely it is for some higher purpose. And in my case, if I found myself hunted on the run, unable to go home and sleep in my own bed, well, then wasn't it wonderful that I had somewhere else to go tonight? For the adventure lovers, there is plenty here as Enola continues to escape her brother by jumping through windows on a tree or brings her dagger out to confront a bully twice her size. While the code lovers have something to enjoy too, this time Enola decrypts a code written in embroidery by linking its symbols to the Morse code. Enola of this book also is slowly coming to realization that every person has a history. For example, her landlady has put a lifetime of suffering behind her to achieve some dignity even in her destitution. While Enola has been busy with her own problems and has barely had any thought about Mrs. Tupper's life, she continues to care for Enola and shown Enola nothing but love and compassion during her stay. To uh, summarize, enjoy this little adventure of the spunky and intelligent girl who embarks on a dangerous mission to save an elderly woman against all odds. The Thinker Views rating for the series continues to be around 7.5 out of 10. Do let us know your thoughts about the series or similar books that you have enjoyed and would like us to review here. And until the next time, thank you for listening.